Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today I'm going to teach you how I study antique garments. One mistake I made early on when um, getting the opportunity to study original garments from the mid-19th century is not taking detailed notes. I relied very heavily on my memory, which was fine when I you only had five, six, seven dresses to remember. But over the years as I studied more and I looked at more original garments, and also as the years have passed and my memory has faded, I have noticed it's not always the best plan. So obviously the best way to combat this is to take meticulous notes. To help me personally with this, I have created a document that I use when I study antique garments. And I have linked that below if you're interested. It's um, a Word document so you can like print it out or you can put it on Word and like edit it. Um, it's it is made very specifically for my time frame, which is 1830 to like 1870. And so like things like crinolines are in there or ego sleeves that you may not need if you're doing if you're doing different time periods. So you can always like edit out whatever you don't need. So today I thought I would walk you through how I would fill out this document. So first of all, there are like five different sheets that I do and I need to figure out which ones I'm actually going to use. So with any type of like outfit garment, I will always fill out page one, um, which is like an overview. It talks about fiber, um, weave, pattern, and that sort of thing. Um, and then after that, I get to choose whether it's just the bodice, and I can fill out the bodice sheet, or if it's just a skirt, I fill out the skirt sheet, um, which is page three. If it's a dress, I'll fill out you know one, two, and three. If it's a dress with two bodices, I fill out one of page one, two of page two, and then one of page three, which is the skirt. If there are any accessories that go with it, like a matching belt or a pelerine, like my original 1850s dress, um, that is page four, I believe. So that would all, like all go together. The first four are kind of like for for sets. Um, and you just pick which ones you need. And then there's also a page specifically for undergarments, so like corsets, um, crinolines, chemises, that sort of thing. And the last page is for other garments, so like wrappers, nightgowns, um, and that bathing gowns, all everything else basically fits on the other sheet. The reason I kind of like the way I have it is that I keep a database on my computer and all of those little points on my paper correlate to, to headings. And so all of my research can go into a database and I can pull out very specific information. So if I wanted to just find out randomly how many of my 1860s silk dresses had coat sleeves, I could like randomly just spit out a percentage, which is kind of awesome. And as I study more original garments, I get to fill in the database and it gives me more accurate numbers, which is kind of awesome. Now you may not like my template, that's fine. Like everyone is different, everyone likes different things. You can use mine as a starting point to like totally change it up. Um, there's probably other things online that you can use. When I study extant garments, this is the information I like to get. I like to get fiber, weave, um, all the measurements, um, trim details, piping details, like all, all those things is what I'm looking for when I study, um, and that may not be your primary goal. So today we're going to fill out some of these forms with extant garments. This is one of my bodices. It is a black silk dating to the mid-1860s. Now because this is a bodice that does not include a skirt, I'm going to be using pages 1, which is labeled garment, and 2, which is labeled bodice. And I won't be using 3 because that's the skirt. So let's start. On the first page, this is just an overview of the garment page. It tells us about the item. You can write any detail about the garment on this line here. And I'm going to do the same on page 2. And if there was a skirt, page 3 as well. That way I know these pieces go together. For error, I'm going to do a rough estimate. I'll just do 1860s here. And I wrote 1862 to 1867. It has um, coat sleeves, which you do see introduced in 1862. Next is credit, which is, is where the, the piece is located. So this is my collection, so I have my name on here. This is also a place if I were to go to a museum and look at one of their gowns, I would put any information that I need to know about the museum itself. So, um, for instance, some museums and some collectors don't like images of their collection floating on the internet so um, I will put like so I'll put like personal use only so I know not to share those images because I don't have permission to do so. Always always ask what is okay and what is not okay when it comes to sharing information about originals that are not your own. Providence is where you can put with any information we know about the dresses. Some dresses um, come with information of who wore them, about when they wore them, that sort of thing. Um, this one I don't have any information on I just know I bought it um, on eBay in 2020. Next we're going to check garment type. So this is just a bodice, so I'm going to do bodice. If you had a whole dress, um, you can just write dress over here and the other, or you could, and what I usually do, is just check bodice and skirt. If the two are attached, I'll draw a little line just right here 
to show that they are attached. Otherwise, I'll leave them separate. If this dress had a matching pelerine or a belt or anything like that, you can write that here, apron, overskirt, um, anything that would go with the dress that's made out of the same fabric that we have Providence that was showing that they were worn together, bonnet, anything like that, I would check here as well. Basically, I'll check anything that goes with this ensemble in this section. Now, we also have a space where I can write notes. Um, say I wanted to make a note that they, you know, the bodice and skirt were attached or weren't attached or show evidence that they were attached at some point or um, if it's a later dress and we know that this style would have been worn with an overskirt, I will say, hey, this is missing its overskirt, anything like that. Next, we're full in fiber. This one is silk. Next, we're going to mark the weave of the gown. This is something that a lot of people may not know. It's really hard to tell um, unless you study a lot of fabrics. This one happens to be a plain weave silk. Um, but I do have several other um, common weaves here. You can always put other, and you can describe it here as well. Now colors. This one is just black, so I just put black. If you have such, if you have a dress that's a plaid or something, you would mark all the colors that you see, and you have a space here that you can describe things. So like if I had a red dress, I would describe it. Is it more scarlet red or more rust red? Um, how much? which is like the main color, so if you have a plaid or a stripe, if there's like a really big blue stripe and a smaller white stripe, I would say, you know, there is twice as much blue as there is white. Just something that helps me know what colors are in this. And then we have pattern. Pattern is just, is there a design to the fiber in the weave? Um, I can say whether that pattern was woven or printed. We can say plain, stripe, plaid, embroidered, print, or other, if there's something else. Um, sometimes you'll have more than one. You'll have a striped dress that also has embroidered embroidery on it, um, or you'll have a stripe that has some prints in it. If there's embroidery, you can describe what the embroidery is. Let's say it's flowers, and there's three types of flowers, so you see them like in, in um, a pattern, so that there's a rose, and a daffodil, and a violet, and then um, it goes in that pattern, and the next one's slightly offset. I would write that down here. Um, I will also put the size of any embroideries or any prints or the plaids. Let's say the whole plaid repeat is four inches or um, the print is two inches across and three inches down. That sort of thing can all go here. Type of information that I was not already on here. So like this one, I put seam allowances are not even on the interior. Now we get to move on to page two. So this is where we actually just talk about the bodice. So if you just had a skirt, you wouldn't be using this piece, you would be using skirt. If you have a whole dress, you're gonna need this and the skirt one. But we already had this filled out, same thing that I put up on the other one, that way we have it. This is where I'm gonna put measurements. So we're gonna measure um, all the measurements that we can get. If you have anything else that you want, and you also have another space you can write even more notes if you need to. If you're working with a um, dress online that you're trying to get information on, you may not have all the measurements. If you're working with a museum, you may not be allowed to touch the garments. You may be working with someone who's measuring it for you, who's um, a professional, or you may not be able to get any measurements at all. Try your best to get at least a few. If you can only get one or two, I would suggest waist and bust. Um, but if you actually can get your hands on the garment or someone will actually measure for you, uh, as many measurements as you can is always the best idea. Next, neckline. So this one is a jewel neckline, which just means it goes to the neck. But we have lots of other options here and you can always add something else here. Bodice style. This one just has a regular round waist. Um, there's also other, other options. So if I had a pointed waist, I could put that here. If it was, because some dresses are have two points and it's not just one point in the front, there'll be a point in the back as well. Or sometimes you'll see two points in the front and three in the back or whatever. You can write all that information here, but I would still mark pointed waist. Fitting methods. This one gets kind of fun because you can have all sorts of fitting methods in a gown. This one uses darts, so the lining and the fashion fabric are darted. And I put the measurements here, so the first dart's one and a, one and three quarters inches from the edge, from the on the back. So it, um, usually in this time period, darts are slanted, and so I put the first dart is one and three quarters inches from the edge on the bottom, and three and a quarter inches from the top. Piping, this is where I'm going to check everywhere I see piping. So on this one, neckline, waistline, arms, eye, and, and of course there could have been another, but this one I just have to see those three. And this one actually has a piece of the cording that is showing through because the silk has worn away. And I can see that it is a small white or cream cord. And so I definitely wrote that down. Sleeves, this particular sleeve is a coat sleeve and um, and it also has a little puff and a cap sleeve. So cap sleeve goes on the top 
and I kind of connected those because it's the same type of sleeve. So it's not two different sleeves attached here. It's a puff and a cap. A uh, cap just being a something that goes on top of another sleeve and that is just the style happens to be a puff. And so I did some measurements of the puff and the actual sleeve here. Bodice closure, it closes up the front. It has hooks and eyes, buttons, and buttonholes. So I do have several measurements here. So I do have several options here and I click and I check whatever I see on that original. So this one happens to have some hooks and eyes, but most of it closes with buttons and buttonholes. Lining, this dress is fully lined. Sometimes you'll see dresses that are unlined or partially lined. Um, and I just put some information here that it's lined in a cotton. Sleeves are lined in brown polished cotton, which is different than the just regular brown cotton that the bodice is lined in. So I have lots of options for trim. You can mark any, you just mark everything you see on that particular dress. This one is fairly plain. Um, it just has ribbon, so they're velvet ribbon, and it's set plainly. So I do have like, here's all the types of uh, trim work here, and this last line is how it's attached. So you can have self-fabric trim that is maybe knife pleated or shirred. You could have um, lace that is perhaps box pleated. So these top two rows are what kind of trim, and this is how it's set. Now you notice I do print these single-sided simply because I want to make sure that I have space on the back if I don't have enough space to write what I need to write. I have the back to do so. I've also been known to draw diagrams, so if a dress is very heavily pieced, I will draw out pieces and I will show where it is all pieced. Um, if you have dresses that are, like for instance, on this particular one, since the hooks and eyes are not actually measured all out, I could use this as a scale and draw out exactly how far the hooks and eyes are on, if I was creating a very specific recre reproduction of this dress. So let's say the first one was an inch, and the next one was an inch and a half, and then an inch and a quarter, and then an inch again. I would mark all that out. So I do like to leave the back blank just in case. Now at this point, if I had the skirt, I would move on to page three, but I don't. So I'm just going to step back and take a good hard look at my bodice and make sure I wrote down everything I could possibly tell about it. I might go back through my notes and make sure to add any other details that I think, such as if this bodice was falling apart, you might get more details, such as the boning material and the darts and that sort of thing. And after I'm done filling this out, I'm going to use this document to take really detailed photographs of the garment. So a lot of the headings on the document can be used to take photographs. So I'll take a photograph of the darts and of each of the piping and the sleeves. And this helps me to know what photographs to take and what details to put in my photographs. With all my pictures taken, I'm going to make sure that each one of my pages are labeled and that they are numbered so I know that it's set. And then I can go up to the next garment or I can start cleaning up and putting things away if this is the only one I'm looking at. Now let's look at using another one of the sheets for something that is not a dress. For this, we're going to look at another piece that's in my collection, a night, a night robe. This one has some lovely embroidery, which is machine done. So here's how we're going to fill this out. I start by filling out a little bit about the, night, the gown itself. So it's an embroidered night robe. I put the Providence, which I bought on eBay, a uh, credit, which is my collection. Garment type, I did night robe, because night robe is not an option here. Um, it is a cotton night robe, but the weave is plain. There is no pattern, so it is plain completely. And colors, the only color on this one is white. This happens to be a very easy uh, garment to put into this system, because it's not very detailed. Notice that I've done all my studying in pencil. It's always best not to have ink around extant garments, and this also means I can come back and amend some things as my knowledge grows. The hem treatment is just a self-fabric hem, and I'm going to put the measurements of the turnover in the blank here. So it's a fourth inch turnover, and then another half, one and a half inch turnover. Now for trim, I get to mark embroidery. This particular style, I believe, is called Border Young Lace. Um, it is machine denim embroidery at the yoke and collars. I did also put buttons because there are mother of pearl buttons down the front and also buttonholes. Under measurements, I just put some basic measurements. I did the front length is 51 and a half inches. The front yoked depth, which is the, the most deep it gets, is 10.5 inches. The back ditto is 7 inches. The sleeve and seam I did put was 18 and, uh, 18 and a quarter inches. The cup, cuff width is 1.5 inches and it's the same for the decorative cuff. For other, I did put machine sewn because this dress is entirely machine sewn. Um, and evidence that the embroidery is machine done as is, is what I put on the very bottom. 
At this point, I'm going to look at the whole thing, make sure there's nothing else I want to write down, and then I'll take some very detailed photographs to put everything in a binder and transfer my hard copy over into my database. Alright, here we are with a black wool straw. I am using the accessory page to document this. So I have it labeled as black silk or black wool straw. I have a shawl labeled here. And I have my measurements, so it happens to be 67 inches long all the way through. There's the, the center part is 49 inches. There is 6 inch trim, or at least the length of it is. And the edging is 2.5 inches. The fringe is only 5 8 inch. And the embroidery is half an inch tall. Those are the measurements I chose to take. The trim, I put contrast fabric. Since the edging here is actually a contrast piece, it's not um, fully woven in. It's not woven design like it is. It's a little woven piece of trim that is hand stitched to a piece of wool fabric. Um, I also put cord because there's these little cord bits at the end. And of course, embroidery because you do see the hand embroidery on top of the contrast. And I also put plain here because this is where the, um, these are what the trim is. This is how the trim is attached. So plain knife pleated shirt or box pleated, you can see here that it is plainly set onto the wool fabric. Construction notes, I put that the thing is entirely hand stitched. It's not woven um, as is, as I talked before, but it, the trim is sewn on by hand. So the fiber is a wool and um, it's entirely wool. The weave is a, actually a twill weave. I really thought it was plain until I got it under um, with a magnifying glass. I can see that it's not plain. Uh, it's just hard on those black fabrics sometimes to really see what's going on. Colors, I marked all the colors that I see, which is black, white, red, orange, green, and pink. Uh, mostly black, of course, with the red being the next dominant color. Uh, the green is kind of hard to tell, um, honestly. And... Um, the yellow kind of just blends, it's more of a goldish yellow, so I actually am going to write this here, that um, the yellow is more, or the orange is more gold. The pattern is woven, so when you look inside the shawl, it is clearly woven, it's not a printed piece. Um, but the pattern is plain on, the, on most of it, and then there's, a there's the printed part. So that's how I would do this type of accessory. It's just the accessory page, and we just discuss, and we just hit the high points. Alright, so that is basically how I use those documents to study original garments. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Of course, as mentioned before, all the documents I used today and a few others are listed below in the description and you're welcome to have a look at them. I have a PDF version if you just want to print it out. I also have the just blank word document just in case you wanted to change some things on it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a fantastic week and I will see you back here on Monday.